World War II was one of the most significant wars in world history. The people during this time witnessed some of the most horrible atrocities known to man, including the attack on Pearl Harbor, the bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and of course the concentration camps in the Holocaust. Though the war is often remembered for its catastrophic death toll, what many forget is that World War II was a war of attrition. France was occupied for most of the conflict, and the English Channel was contested from the beginning. But because it was such a long and drawn out affair, one cannot just look at the major conflicts. You have to step back and take a glance at the origins, both political and ethical. Secretary Rudolf Hess, the work Mein Kampf. <laughs> in which he set forth this program for the restoration of Germany to a dominant position in Europe. <laughs> After reoccupying the Rhineland zone between France and Germany and annexing Austria, the Sudetenland, and the remainder of Czechoslovakia, Shakespeare invaded Poland on September 1st, 1939, thus precipitating World War II. I never knew that before. Was just like, was just, okay, okay. Okay, Shakespeare remained in Berlin when the Russians entered the city on April 1st, 1945, and committed suicide with his mistress, Ava Perone. <laughs> he lies buried in the church at Stratford. Thank you very much. That's all I Democracy stunk. Democracy is fragrant. Liberty stunk. Liberty is odious. Free sprechen stunk. Freedom of speech is objectionable. Tomania mit der größte Armee in der Welt. Tomania has the greatest army in the world. Der größte Navy in der Welt. The greatest navy in the world. Mit seiner Erde größer alles und einer zu sacrifice. But to remain great, we must sacrifice. Ah. We must tighten our belts. World War II all started out from World War I. It's ironic how the war to end all wars started in one of the most bloody wars in history. The Treaty of Versailles was a complete failure. It stated that Germany had to pay reparations, must have no more than a 100,000 men army, no navy or air force, and basically blamed World War I on the Germans and the German people. This, instead of fixing the problem, just made the Germans even more angry, especially a young war veteran named Adolf Hitler. After World War I, Hitler was in the hospital from an injury. His job in the army was very dangerous because he had to run through crossfire to deliver messages to different trenches, German trenches of course, after out of the hospital, he joined an upcoming political group in Germany called the Nazis. Hitler was very charismatic and used this to rise to power, but also the fact that Germany was in deep economic doo-doo and did not have a strong leader might have contributed to this raise of power as well. Hitler! Hail! After Hitler's rise to power, he started going against things in, that were stated in the Treaty of Versailles. One thing he went against was militarizing Rhineland. He sent troops in marching right through Rhineland. France, of course, was outraged. In the Treaty of Versailles, it says that if Hitler or the Germans come and militarize Rhineland, then France has full right to go and wage war onto the Germans. But the British held them back. The British went to the French and told them that they should not do anything because they don't want to start a war at this time because they just got out of World War I. I'm Hitler and I'm militarizing Rhineland. Mine comes more like mine swing. <laughs> After signing the Soviet non aggression pact, Hitler invaded Poland on September 28, 1939. This is the invasion that sparked the war, dragging France and Great Britain into the conflict. Yeah! My ah! Poland! Mine! Poland! I don't care! <laughs> After Poland, the Nazis quickly set their sights on France. Within days, they'd conquered Paris and had 400,000 French and British troops cornered against the ocean at Dunkirk. But Britain's shiny new Prime Minister, Churchill, quickly ordered everything that floated into the English Channel for an evacuation. 
340,000 of those troops were successfully evacuated using a combination of military craft, lifeboats, pleasure cruisers, and fishing boats. Help! 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 Help me! Help! Don't help. worry! Help. I'm here help. to save you! Help. Thank you! France itself was taken under Nazi control. The state was divided in half, with the South placed under a puppet government known as Vichy France, while the North remained occupied. Hitler began a two-front war with his invasion of Russia, violating the non-aggression pact he signed earlier. Stalin's paranoia turned out to be a boon, as the dictator expected this invasion. Stalin was further aided by an early winter, which is ironically the same thing that halted Napoleon's Russian campaign. In December of 1941, Stalin's troops successfully repelled the Nazis and turned the tide in the war. On December 7, 1941, Japanese carriers launched a preemptive airstrike on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor. The same day, they also launched attacks on the Philippines and began advancing on British Malaya. Immediately, the U.S. declared war on Japan. Although Hitler was not de required to declare war on the U.S. in his loose alliance with the Japanese, and at the same time they had failed to aid him during his Russian offensive, he declared war on the U.S. all the same. Three days later, the U.S.'s isolationist sentiment was broken and it was brought into the European conflict. British and American troops sandwiched the German offensive in Africa, quickly driving them north into Sicily. The Allies then plowed through the Italian peninsula until they were halted to the south of Rome by heavy German fortifications. This mattered not after the Second Front opened up. During Operation Overlord, better known as D-Day, a symphony of misdirection and espionage combined with aggressive naval tactics landed five assault divisions on the beaches of Normandy. This amphibious operation opened up the Western Front to the Allies and began to box the Nazis in. After Hitler's Russian offensive failed, the Soviets made an unprecedented march westward. They recaptured Leningrad and the Ukraine. They then plowed through the Baltic states, Poland, and East Germany. Meanwhile, southern troops swept through the Balkans and they occupied Warsaw in January 1945. The Russians entered Berlin in April. Hitler himself committed suicide with his mistress on April 30th, 1945, two days after the death of Mussolini. His generals surrendered a week later. Adolf, come in the bitte. No, it's time to kill ourselves. Okay. The war on the Pacific Front was a much longer conflict. After several difficult island battles, President Harry S. Truman, whose S stands for nothing, ordered the use of a newly developed nuclear weapon on the Japanese. This device was dropped first on the Japanese city of Hiroshima on August the 6th, and then Nagasaki on the 9th, after the Japanese failure to surrender. Thousands died in seconds as the atomic bomb saw its first use quickly surrendered due to a combination of this weapon and the Soviets' declaration of war. The Cold War officially began after the Potsdam Conference in July 1945. The U.S. attempted to liberate Europe, but the Soviet Union did not follow along. President Truman made things worse by telling the Soviets that the U.S. had the bomb, thus beginning the competition. This went on until the Soviet Union fell in 1991, ending the Cold War.